In this video, we're going to focus on simplifying expressions by using exponent properties, and we're going to specifically focus on fractions that have common bases in both the numerator and the denominator. So exponent property number three here is going to focus on a situation like you see currently on the screen. Notice how we have a fraction here, and in our numerator and in our denominator, we have a common base. And our common base here is 3. So we're going to see if we can figure out a shortcut to help us simplify this using a pattern that we see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand out that numerator. So 3 squared I know is 3 times 3. And then I know if I expand out my denominator, I get 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And then while it seems like maybe I don't know how to simplify this further, I really do. Because I know that if I were to simplify fractions, essentially what I would do is I would divide both the top and the bottom by a factor that they have in common, which in this case is 3. So those cancel. I then could divide by another factor of 3, and those cancel. And what I find is that eventually one side of the fraction is going to run out of that number. In this case, our numerator has run out of threes. So once I've divided all of those threes out, I'm left with just a one in my numerator. And in my denominator, what I notice is I have four threes left, which I can represent as three to the power of four. And then if I take a look at what I started with, what I notice is that the relationship between six and two the way that I could produce 4 is by taking 6 minus 2, and that would equal 4. So essentially, I can subtract my exponents here, and then I leave the 4 remaining 4s that I had wherever I had the bigger exponent, which in this case was in our denominator. So here we're going to summarize what we just saw in words. It says when you are dividing, remember fractions are division, so when you are dividing terms with the same base, you simply need to subtract the exponents and place the remaining of that term where the larger exponent was. So we're going to practice this with a couple of examples, and hopefully by the end you'll have the hang of it. So here in example A, I have x to the power of 5 and x to the power of 2 on different sides of my fraction. And because they have a common base, I know that I can subtract them. So I can do 5 times 2 is equal to 3. So I know that I have 3 x's left. And because I had more x's in my numerator to start, there were 5, I know that re my remaining x's are in the numerator and then I have a 1 in my denominator, and then I can also write this as x to the power of 3. Now if this is still confusing you, you can still write this out like we did on the previous slide. So my numerator is x times x times x times x times x, so 5x's. My denominator is x times x, and I can cancel some out, and you can see that I have 3x's left in the top, and just a 1 in my denominator, hence where my final answer came from. Now example B, we have a few more y's, so while we could draw this out, to draw out 24 y's and 20 y's would be a little bit tedious. So we're going to use our pattern to help us out. So here I notice that I have common bases in both the numerator and the denominator. So I can take my two exponents, take 24, subtract 20. So I know there are four remaining y's, and because I had more y's in the denominator to start, my remaining four y's are going to go in my denominator, and then I will have a one in my numerator left over. And because I have a one in my numerator, I can't just wipe that out. A one in a denominator, we're just dividing by one, but a one in my numerator, I have to leave as a fraction. And then finally down here in part C, I notice that seven and seven are both a common base. So I can take 40 and subtract 28, and that leaves me with 12 sevens. And because I had more in my numerator to start, I know that I have 7 to the power of 12 in my numerator and 1 in my denominator. 
because there's a 1 in my denominator, I can write this as 7 to the power of 12. And while you could try to calculate this on your calculator, 7 to the power of 12 is a very, very, very large number. So I'm okay for this example if you just leave it as 7 to the power of 12. So now we're going to expand our knowledge and look at what happens when we have multiple bases in one problem. So you'll notice here in part A that we have y's, x's, and z's. And essentially all we do is we apply the same pattern, we just focus on one base at a time. So I'm going to start by focusing on the y's. I notice that I have three y's in my numerator and four y's in my denominator. So I'm going to take four minus three and that leaves me with one y, or y to the power of one. So then what I'm going to do is I need to decide where that y to the power of one is left. And because the four is bigger and in the denominator, my y to the power of one is going to go into my denominator. And then I'm going to focus on the x's, and I notice that I have an x to the power of two in my numerator, and an x to the power of 10 in my denominator. So I take 10, minus 2 is equal to 8, so that leaves me with x to the power of 8, and because there were more x's in my denominator to start, this x to the power of 8 is going to remain in my denominator. Then from the last part, I'm going to look at the z's. So here I notice I have 7 z's in my numerator and 2 z's in my denominator, which leaves me with z to the power of 5, and because I have more z's in my numerator to start, I'm going to have z to the power of 5 in my numerator. Alright, if we look at the next example, focusing on one variable at a time. Here I have b to the power of 12 and b to the power of 8. 12 minus 8 is 4, so I have b to the power of 4 left, and the 12 in the numerator is bigger, so the b to the power of 4 goes in my numerator. I then focus on a's, so I have a to the 10th and a to the 7th, which leaves me with three a's left, and because the a to the 10th is the bigger exponent and in the denominator, I have a to the power of three in my denominator. Lastly, here I have c to the power of three and c to the power of 20. 20 minus three leaves us with 17 c's, so we have c to the power of 17, and because the 20 is bigger and in the denominator, the c to the power of 17 is left in the denominator. And lastly, here we have d's, e's, and f's in part c. So I'm going to focus first on d, so I have d to the 8th and d to the 10th. 10 minus 8 leaves us with 2, and because the 10 is larger, we're going to have d to the power of 2 in our denominator where the 10 was. Then we're going to focus on e, so I have e to the power of 4 and e to the power of 8. So 8 minus 4 leaves me with 4 e's, and because the 8 is bigger and in the denominator, we're going to have e to the power of 4 in our denominator. And then finally I have f to the power of 6 and f to the power of 13. So 13 minus 6 leaves me with 7 f's, or f to the power of 7. So then from here, I'm going to have f to the power of 7 in my denominator because 13 is larger and it is located in my denominator. Now here, because all of my larger exponents were in the denominator, I still have to have a numerator. I can't just leave it blank. And if there's nothing left in our numerator, you can assume that our numerator is 1.